Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Server Gyan. My name is Dr. Lokendra Singh. And today we are going to discuss about all the questions which have been asked or which have been posted as comment by viewers. So let us start with that. But before that I would like to request you to please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And do not forget to press the bell icon as you will be notified for my upcoming videos. One more thing like uh, I am going to start this procedure going forward that uh, Every week, I will pick the questions which are posted by viewers and I will create a videos on them as well. But that will be part of any other video. It means that will not be separate video, but obviously that is going to be part of an existing one. So, okay, let us start. So, the uh, Abhinas is asking, can you explain briefly about the software release? What are the various ways to create, save, build, test, configure, monitor, deploy? So yes, that is really uh, like critical and that is really important process to know. So first of all, we push code to Git. From Git, we pull code using Jenkins. Then after we have build uh, process, we save artifact to Nexus. Then we have Nexus in place. Nexus is a repository where we save all the artifact. Then after either using Jenkins or using Ansible, we deploy code to target servers. Once we deploy code to target server, then after we run, like uh, obviously like test cases. After test cases, we hand all the things over to monitoring system. So monitoring system will take care of all these things like what code is has been pushed whether that is performing fine or not. We can check that previously the response time of code and we can compare that thing to existing response time and all. So that is somehow like these are the tools which are included in build and release process. First of all Git for source code management, Jenkins for build creation, Nexus for uh, artifact repository and we can we can pick we can pick the code which has been recently built from artifact repository then after ansible is a tool which we use to deploy code on different servers then after we execute it, we execute test cases then after we go for monitoring okay so this is a typical process of build and deploy then after next question is uh, like uh, how do dev like how to become devops engineer with real time project with the free available resources on any course or any course do you recommend for the same so yes first of all i would recommend you that you need to begin with couple of things if you really want to become a devops so i'm going to tell you that what are the tools and what are the technologies we should know in order to become a devops so the very first thing is linux so linux is such a thing which you should know then after Linux, you should be knowing about any cloud computing. So you can pick AWS. Reason why I'm suggesting AWS because most of companies are using AWS as of today. AWS holds more than 60% share of all the entire cloud infrastructure. So that is the thing which you can opt for and that is the best thing as of today. After AWS, you should know a couple of more things. First of all, Jenkins for build and deploy. Then after Ansible, you should know. Then after Ansible, you should have hands on to Docker. Because anywhere, wherever you go, so obviously people are asking about containerization. After it, you should be having uh, hands on with bash scripting. After bash scripting, you should be uh, aware of any monitoring tool. That could be Nagios, that could be Splunk, Splunk, that could be ELK. So anyone, whatever you like, you can opt for. So if you know these things, so it means you are good to go with DevOps. But this is not an end. Apart from this, you need to know like Kubernetes. You need to know about any web server, maybe Apache or Nginx. So if you know these things, then you can call yourself as a DevOps. Moreover, like... Uh, Obviously, these all tools are available on YouTube for free. 
like if you talk about linux if you talk about aws couple of jenkin videos docker so and bash scripting apache these all tools are available on server gyan itself you can find it and rest of and remaining tools definitely i have a plan to be create videos on all these topics fine then let us talk about next one let us pick next question so like uh, ganesh kumar says that uh, i have a small query how infra guy will play his job role according to devops what i mean to say if system admin is working in traditional architecture if he wants to move to devops what kind of role he has to play in day to day life and would you suggest uh, like uh, please thinking you in advance brother okay so the person is already has uh, read me thanks so definitely i'm going to explain so if you are working as infrastructure admin as of now and you want that you want to become a devops so when we are talking about aws guys so they are working on linux they are working on aws so being infrastructure admin you are already working on these tools so if you have to become devops admin so you need to have hands on on couple of more tools like as i have just explained like jenkins ansible docker bash scripting and monitoring tool so monitoring you must always be know uh, you must already be knowing reason being because you are already working as infrastructure admin so these are the things and obviously when you will become devops guy so being devops you will be manage you will be uh, like responsible to manage all the things which are running inside your organization why i am saying so because being devops so you are developer so it means you cannot say that you don't know ansible you don't know jenkins and bash scripting so you are dev so you have to know all the things once again you are ops as well so you cannot say that you know you do not know that how to bring a linux server up so that is why devops team is responsible for each and everything whatever is running inside organization now next is like uh, tipu swami tipu e swami is saying that uh, please make a video on real time issues and how to solve them so for sure as and when i get questions on real time scenarios i keep on creating videos on them but yes i have one more request to make here that if you any of you goes for facing interview and uh, please collect your questions and post on any of video whatever you watch on server gyan channel i will pick all the questions from there and i will definitely create next video on them and moreover i will explain those questions in really detail that uh, in upcoming time you shall not be facing any issue while facing those questions once again so i need your support as well definitely if you face any interview question so if you face an interview so please make a note of all the interview questions and you can post those question to server gyan channel and i will create a video on that okay so uh, saujanya says that depending upon what criteria you choose reason so this is really intelligent question i appreciate that you put this question first of all we have to check that from where all the users are supposed to come maybe from india maybe from singapore uh, and maybe from around the world so very first thing is that so based on our user base so where from our user base is about to come we need to select the region near to our user base for example if we are going to run such a website that all the users from india only will be coming to place will be coming to site so we need to select our region in india only reason being we will have very less latency second thing how do we select availability zone so based on availability zone uh, which are provided by aws we need to create our resources in all the availability zones reason being the very first thing is whenever we create resources in multiple availability zones so all the resources interact with one another on local network only or you can call that like private ip address only so that is not chargeable moreover if any of availability zone goes down so we can easily switch or we can easily pick another availability zone to run our instances or to run our resources so that is always mandatory and that is always recommended and suggested to create your resources in all the availability zones provided by aws and that is why at least two availability zone aws has in all the available regions wherever aws is functional aws is operational in term of customer services okay so like based on our requirement we select our like region 
सेकेंड थिंग लाइक योर यूजर बेस इज द मेन क्राइटेरिया टू सिलेक्ट योर रीजन वेयर फ्रॉम योर यूजर आर सपोज टू कम ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम नागराज इज लाइक can we crack interview of 2 plus year of experience along with real time project so it means uh, once again i would like to uh, request you guys that please share your questions whatever you face during interview so most of people will be getting getting benefit out of it that if you share interview questions with me definitely i will create next video and obviously i will create more and more on it okay so i have taken this question twice not a problem so charan bhargav says bro what is the difference between scripted and declarative pipeline is the difference only in syntax or is there any other more thing to do okay so let me tell you one thing here that jenkin has multiple types of pipelines available it could be free, uh, when we talk about jobs so there are multiple type of jobs like freestyle maven project you have pipelines multi branch pipeline you have in the same manner when we are talking about decryptive uh, declarative and scriptive pipeline so the main difference here is when you talk about scripted pipeline so you define all the things here like step by step but when you talk about declarative so you have to declare that if you need to go for any approval or you need to have any like uh, external authentication required on it so need not to worry about i will definitely create a separate video on this topic then uh, rohit rajput is asking like uh, rest of things are fine but there is only one question can we use the instances from public and private subnet in the same target group for load balancing purpose so the answer is yes technically we can use from public and private both behind a single load balancer but that totally depends on the type of load balancer you have whether you have internal load balancer or whether you have public load balancer created second thing that we should not have public ip address associated with the instances which we are going to uh, uh, like uh, associate behind any elastic load balancer reason being your elastic load balancer has public as well as private ip address and all the traffic is forwarded on your private ip addresses only moreover you can secure your instances in case if you do not associate public ip address on your instances which are serving your application but yes once again the answer goes like you can associate all the servers from public and private subnet behind a single load balancer but that will depending on whether you have created public or whether you have created private like internal load load balancer so that is it for this video guys once again i have request to make so if any of you going to face interview so please make a note of those questions and please share with me on server gyan channel as a comment i shall be happy to create further more videos on your interview questions whatever you share with me so this is it for this video guys thank you so very much for uh, provide uh, for providing your inputs have a good time happy learning from server gyan thank you very much please do like share and subscribe to my channel happy learning